Hi, this is Aaron, and today we are going to play Hungarian Tarok, specifically the kind that they call Puskevich. This is a Tarok game, a Central European Tarok game, uh, which only uses 42 cards. Basically, you take your standard 54 card Austrian Tarok deck, and you take out the lowest three cards in each of the coloured suits, so that you end up with only five cards in each suit. So the red cards go King, Queen, Knight, Jack, and Ace, and the black suits go King, Queen, Knight, Jack, and Ten. So there's only 20 suit cards, and then the 22 trump cards. You can see here they are labelled 1 through 21 in Roman numerals, and then the full is the unnumbered trump, which is basically trump 22 in this game. Now, if you're any good at maths, you'll realise that that means more than half of the deck consists of the trump cards. The trump cards beat any of the suit cards when played to a trick. To demonstrate how to play the game, I'm using the website boardgamearena.com. This is basically the only place to play Hungarian Tarok on your computer. And down the bottom you can see my hand here. You start with nine cards. I have the ten of clubs, the king of diamonds, and then a whole bunch of trumps. Uh, the one, the five, the seven, the eleven, the fifteen, the sixteen, and the fool, the schkiz, so, trump twenty-two. One other thing I really should mention before we start is that the game that I'm going to show you here that we were playing on Board Game Arena uh, was very much a learning game. Um, none of the four of us had actually played very often, so we do quite a few things here that uh, serious Hungarian players would not do. Uh, you'd probably really annoy your partner if you did some of these, but look, it's okay. We were sort of uh, working it out as we went along. So pretend you just walked into the game in the middle of it where we're already playing, and just watching what's going on, I led the 16 of trumps. Everyone else had to play a trump as well. Nysterious over on the left there played the trump 22, so he won that trick because he played the highest card to it. Because Nysterious won the last trick, he leads to the next one. He plays the 10 of spades. If you have a spade, you have to play it. And if you don't have a spade, you have to play a trump. So I put a lowish trump on it, hoping that I can pick up some valuable other spade cards. Oh, but no, Death and Friends had the six of trumps, so he actually took that one off me then. He leads the king of hearts. Everyone else has to play a heart if they can. I don't have a heart, so I have to play a trump. Throw the 15 on there. Does king player have a higher trump than that? Keeping me in suspense. No, he didn't. He played the 12 and fed it to me. So now what do I lead? Hmm. Eventually I decide to play the schiz. Play the fool, which is the highest card in the game. Everyone else has to play a trump. They have to follow suit if they have a trump. So that's four of them gone. Now what do I play? Maybe let's play another trump and then see if I can vacuum some more trumps out of the other players. Mm, King player played the 14. So he's heading the trick at the moment. Death and friends, what are you going to do? Plays the four of trumps. Mysterious is out of trumps. He played the... Uh, one of diamonds there. King player has the 20. That means that King player's just had a little grey crown uh, pop up next to his name. And the other two have had shields pop up next to their name. Now, if you look down the bottom, I'm Chicken Duck. And next to my username, you can see that there is a gold crown. That means I'm the declarer in this game. I'm trying to win the game. And King player with the grey crown is my secret partner. The other two players there with the grey shields are the defenders. They're basically trying to stop us hitting our point target. Okay, king player led a trump. That means I'm going to have to play my last trump. As you have to follow suit in this game and the trumps count as a suit. King player leads the 19. That should be safe. That means I'm going to be able to play that... Uh, surely I just play the king of diamonds so that I can pass the tasty points of the king across to the king player, and then king player safely plays the king of spades the last trick, and we take that. If we were playing at a physical table, you'd now see king player and I put together all the cards in all the tricks that we'd won, and go through and count how many points worth of cards we had won, and Nysterious and Death and Friends would probably be doing the same, just to double check. And uh, as it happens, uh, king player and I had 70 points worth of cards, which meant that we won this hand. Now. You might be asking, firstly, there's a lot of questions here. Why a king player and I a partnership in the first place? And also, what's this about card points? 70 points worth of cards, how do, how do we actually calculate that? All right, let me go through. So 
This is a point trick game. Doesn't matter how many tricks you win, it matters how many points you win. And each of the cards is worth a certain amount of points. The One of Trumps is nicknamed the Pagat. The Pagat, the 21 of Trumps, and the Skis, which is what Hungarians call the Fool, make a special set called the Trull cards, which is from French, tous les trois, which means all three in French. Now, the Trull cards are worth five points each, so they're very valuable to win tricks that have any of those three Trull cards in them. Also, kings are worth five points each, so you have to try and win tricks that have kings in them. The queens are worth four points each, the knights are worth three points each, the jacks are worth two points each, and then all the other cards, either the bottom card in each suit or all the other trumps or the other tarots, are worth one point each. Add all them up and the full deck contains 94 card points in total. Now, to win the game, if you're the declarer, you need to be getting a majority of them. A 47 to 47 tie is a win for the defense. You need to get 48 points minimum to win the game. So now you know the objective of the game, we'll start again. If you're playing in person, you deal nine cards each. There's a couple of different ways to deal. I might explain in the second video. Uh, and then once you've got nine cards each, you deal an extra stack of six cards into the middle. These are called the Talon. And uh, in a sec, once we're, once we're doing the bidding process, you're gonna see what the Talon cards actually do. So once you look at your hand, you have to decide what you're going to bid. And one important detail is that you can only bid if you hold one of the Trull cards either the 1, the 21, or the skis. Now, I have the 21 of trumps, so I could bid, but I won't. Mysterious has already bid. He looks pretty serious, so I might let him have it. Now, you have to bid either 3, 2, 1, or solo, which basically means uh, 3 means you're going to take the top 3 cards from the Talon and use them to improve your hand, or take the top 2, take the top 1, or don't take any at all is what solo means. Nysterius took the top three cards from the Talon. The remaining three are distributed one to each of the other three players. And then you have to discard the same number of cards that you picked up from the Talon. So I picked up one, so I've got to discard one. Now, Nysterius then has to call who's going to be his partner. This game grew out of the Austrian game Zwanzigerwolfen, which means calling the 20, um, because as opposed to Königwolfen, uh, the bidder uh, calls their partner by saying whoever has the 20 is going to play with me instead of in Königwolfen calling the king where you say okay the king of hearts or the king of diamonds or whichever whoever holds that card is going to play with me normally you call whoever holds the 20 to be your partner however if you hold the 20 yourself you could call the person who holds the 19 and if you hold the 20 and the 19 you could even call the person holding the 18 which is what Nysterius has done here which means he must have a pretty good hand, uh, which is great for me because I've got the 18, which means now I'm going to be his partner. Okay, so once you've decided who is the declarer and who their secret partner is, uh, you go around and make a, an extra set of declarations of what bonuses uh, the declarer's team are going to aim for. Now, there's a couple of different ones. The first one is Trull, which basically just means that the declarer reckons that they can win all three Trull cards in their tricks. So that would be the One of Trumps, 21 of Trumps, and the Skiz. The next thing you might announce is Nej Kirai, which means four kings in Hungarian. Basically just means all four kings will be in the tricks that you win. You could also bid Pagat Ultimo, which means you're pretty sure that you are going to win the last trick with the Pagat, with the One of Trumps. Then you may even bid the 21 catch or husenech vogash in uh, Hungarian, which means that you're going to catch the opponent's 21 with the skis. Some other things you can bid include dupliatik, which basically means you're going to get three quarters of all the card points in the game. Um, dupliatik is Hungarian for double game, so you need to take at least 71 point tricks. On uh, BGA, they actually translate it as high game. Um, but same thing. You can also Contra, which is the same as in Skart and Königwolfen and other German games. Uh, it's a declaration that the defenders make that they think you won't achieve whatever it is that you're bidding on. On BGA, they call it double the game or double the bonus because it doubles the points. Um, you can also bid Volat, which means you're pretty sure you're gonna win every trick. Now also, if you have eight trumps in your starting hand, 
uh, the other three players pay you one point each. If you declare that you have nine trumps in your starting hand, each of the other players pay you two points each. It's actually uh, not compulsory to declare it, but you can do so for some extra points. So you'll work out from all these very quickly that in this game, the bonuses are worth more than the actual game is a lot of the time. So if you beat a game of three, uh, which is what Mysterious did just before. That game is only worth one victory point if we win it. However, if we can add on some of these bonuses, if we can, for example, uh, manage to catch the opponent's 21, that will be worth a lot of points. If we can win the last trick with the Pagat, that will be worth a lot of points too, much more than the game is. Now, if you announce beforehand that you're going to do it, it doubles the value. Winning the last trick with the Pagat is still worth five points even if you don't announce it. If it just happens to happen, we get five victory points. But if we announced beforehand that we were going to do it and we successfully did, we would get 10. Catching the opponent's 21 is by far the juiciest amount of points that you can get in this game. It nets you 21 victory points, which is massive. And if you somehow are certain beforehand that you're going to be able to do it and you pre-announce it, then you will get 42 victory points, which is nuts. Now the other thing is, this game is often referred to as the one with the hat, because if anyone is uh, unlucky enough or silly enough to manage to lose their 21 to the opponent's skis, if you're playing in Hungary, there is a bit of a tradition that you will then have to wear a silly hat, uh, as long as it takes for someone else to lose the 21, and then they will have to wear the hat. So back at the table now, uh, Nysterius has declared Ultimo, meaning Pagat Ultimo. He thinks he's going to be able to win the last trick with the Pagat. Now, I've announced Trull. Because I hold uh, one of the high Trull cards, I'm letting Michael know, basically, that I have the 21. I would do the same if I had the Shkiz and he called me as partner. And basically, that means that he now knows I'm his partner. Normally, it's a secret, but it can come out in the bidding. Uh, and so we are going to aim to win the last trick with the with the Pagat and to take all three Trull cards. And I reckon we're pretty safe with that. Now, both the defenders have just passed. In the round of bonus declarations, the opponents could call Contra, which is basically meaning that they think that either we won't win the game we said we would or we won't achieve the bonus that we said we would. On BGA, the button is actually labeled double the game because it doubles the game, the value of the game or of the of the bonus. So you can choose which of the bonuses you're going to contra. Okay, Death and Friends leads. Uh, he led the King of Spades, which immediately Michael uh, has taken possession of over there. Hopefully King Player does not drop a higher trump on it. There's a risk he might. Um, because, yeah, he did. I thought that might happen because I had uh, two spades to start. There was a good chance King Player did not have any spades. King Player leads the Ten of Clubs. Death and Friends plays the Seven of Trumps. Nysterious plays the Nine of Trumps. Okay, that's ours. So I can chuck that Knight on it. Get some points uh, home safely to us. Now I've got a, I've got a lot of Trumps here in my hand. What am I going to do? I'm going to throw on the Three of Trumps because I think my High Trumps might take some more tricks later on. Means that the 21 is definitely going to win a trick later on. And I'm going to have to make sure that I lead out trumps uh, if I'm back on bid to suck all the trumps out of the other two so that Michael's one of trumps can win the last trick. Okay, what am I going to do here? I might play the 18 just to push out if there's any other high trumps here. Okay, then I lead the 21, so everyone else who has uh, trumps left will have to follow them. I'm just trying to get rid of any trumps that Death and Friends and King Player have left, so that uh, Michael can, uh, at some point, hopefully take the lead back, because he still has the 20 somewhere, and then uh, hopefully he'll be able to um, play other stuff and win the last trick with the Pagat. Diamond, have to follow suit with Diamonds. Uh-oh, this could get expensive because if Death and Friends has any trumps left, he did, he had the 14, he will win that. And now, because he led a suit that Nysterius did not have, Nysterius had to follow with the Pagat with his last trump. And then Death and Friends had another trump there. So, this is an excellent example of what can happen in Hungarian Tarok, where we won the game. 
we got 54 card points, more than 48, no worries. But we lost the Pagat Ultimo, which we had pre-announced. So that's negative 10 to us, whereas it would have been 10 victory points if we got it. So that's 10 points for that failed Pagat Ultimo that goes to the defenders. They still pay us one because we won the game and another two because we won the Trull that we pre-announced. But the uh, net outcome is that the defense get an extra seven victory points and Nasterius and I lose seven victory points. It's a zero-sum game, so whatever one player or the uh, attacking team win or lose, the defenders win or lose the same amount. So everyone's scores will always add up to zero. Okay, let's have a look at another really interesting hand that we played before. Uh, now, looking at my starting hand, I've just got suit cards, which is pretty unusual. Uh, the only trump I've got is the 20, uh, the, the 20 which is kind of dangerous because there's a good chance that I'm going to be called as someone's partner. Now, King Player uh, has passed. Death and Friends has bid a game of three. Now, I have to pass because I don't have a trull. Uh, but it probably means that Death and Friends is going to call me as his partner. Now, I'm going to discard the Queen of Diamonds because there's a good chance it's going to be lost in a trick anyway. Um, you're not allowed to discard kings, but you can discard some of the other suit cards. Now, I'm thinking about it. Maybe I'll actually discard the uh, Jack of Hearts because maybe King Death and Friends might actually be able to save my King of, uh, Queen of Diamonds here. Let's see what happens. Now, normally when you make your discard, you don't discard any trumps unless you have to. Death and, Death and Friends obviously had to and told us all that I have discarded whichever number trump it is. Then he calls the 22 as his partner. That's me, as I knew it was going to be. And has uh, he has also declared that he has eight trumps, so each of the three of us pays him a point, even me, even though I'm going to be his partner. Now, looking around the announcements here, there are no further declarations, no more bonuses that anyone is saying I'm going to get them. So we wait for King Player to lead to the first trick. Okay, King player leads the Jack of Diamonds, so everyone else has to play Diamonds if they can. Death and Friends had to play the King of Diamonds. That was clearly his only suit card that he had in his hand because he has eight Tarox and he's just played one that's not a Tarox. So everything else from here, you know that every trick he's going to play a trump to it. So that means he's going to have a trump higher than the two. He can take that, catching my tasty, tasty king there. We're not going to get the four kings because Mysterious uh, won the trick before that had the king of diamonds in it. I play the trump 20. So now Death and Friends knows that I'm his partner. Um, I lead the six. I have no Tarox left. But let's see if this vacuums a few out of the other guys. Death and Friends can take this trick as well. He plays the 16. And Nysterius plays the 13. So counting how many trumps are left in the game, uh, knowing how many Death and Friends has, and how many then Nysterius and King Player must hold, what's King Player going to do here? Does he have any trumps left, or is it just the other two that hold all of the remainders? No, King Player has a 15. At this point, we're wondering what King Player might lead, and it turns out that he leads the 21. This is a risky move, because Death and Friends probably has the Shkiz. And there you go. This is going to get very expensive. For them, not for us. It's going to be great for Death and Friends and myself. As I explained before, uh, this was really a teaching game. None of the four of us had played very much Hunger and Tarok at this point. Uh, so we're all sort of just learning this one. But that's a good, ex a good illustration of what can happen um, if you lose the... 21 to the Shkiz. So indeed, it was hat time for King Player at this point. Okay, so Death and Friends plays the Trump 12, the Tarok 12. Uh, Nysterious plays the Jack of Clubs. Um, I chuck on the Knight of Spades. That's not going to do much else there. King Player takes that trick. Uh, leads the Knight of Diamonds. Okay, I can pass some points back over to to Death and Friends, as he was uh, the only one with the Tarok in that trick. Now, King Player had the 19 Trump up his sleeve at the end. So actually, wow, uh, this has been interesting. So the game itself, we won the game, but it's only worth one point, And we didn't even win it by that much. Uh, but we got 21 points for catching the 21. But we lost five points 
for a failed Pagat Ultimo. So neither of those were announced. Like, that was a silent Pagat Ultimo, which Death and Friends was going for, which he lost, and a silent uh, 21 catch. So add all that up. It's one point for the game, minus five for the failed Pagat Ultimo, and 21 for the 21 catch. Death and Friends and I get 17 victory points each. Mysterious and King Player lose 17 victory points each. Okay, so that's Hunger and Tarok. Uh, this video basically just shows you the rules. I'm going to have a separate video up, as I said before, which tells you more about the conventions. So there are things that are not actually rules per se, but are more or less treated as such by players who play the game regularly um, in Hungary. And even if you play online, if you're playing on Board Game Arena, you still kind of need to know these conventions um, in order to play with the experienced players and not annoy them too much, or even just to play well. But this video at least tells you the basic rules. This is enough to get you started, and you could jump into a game with three of your friends and have a muck around and at least sort of get the basics down. But definitely have a look at the other video, um, and then after you've seen that, you'll be more or less prepared to, you know, to play the game seriously. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed all of that, and we will see you anon.